Welcome back now to Public Affairs on Peach. Again this morning, we are taking a look at vaccines and vaccine safety. Dr. Dan Blumenthal and Scott Lester are both here with us this morning. Good morning to the both of you. Uh, let's pick on. Uh, let's pick up exactly where we left off, and we were talking about asthma. Uh, first, doctor, let me ask you: Do you see a correlation with the increased amount of kids with asthma and the increased amount of vaccines out there? Well, as we pointed out, there has been an increase in both of those things. That doesn't mean that one causes the other. Let me tell you what there's been a decrease in. There's been a huge decrease in kids getting meningitis because of new immunizations, a huge decrease in kids getting bacterial pneumonia because of immunization. And we know that that's due to immunization. We have no reason to believe that asthma is due to vaccines. All right. Scott, I'll now ask you. Yes. Uh, well, I'll beg to differ. And uh, if you look at the studies on asthma, and this is on the SmartVax website, there are some that don't show correlation. The bulk of them do. The largest study, it's a Canadian study over a 10-year period, shows a 1 in 13 risk of vaccine-induced asthma from the pertussis vaccine. Interestingly, it also showed that if you delay that vaccine by four months, so that instead of two, four, and six months, it's at six, eight, and ten months, that risk goes away. All right. There have been people going on television over the past few years, and they have linked autism to vaccines. It's a debate that's been going on uh, now for the last several years. Uh, the Hep V vaccine was shown in a recent uh, st study and research to be associated with a three times increased risk of autism. Apparently, that was the study published in the September 2009 issue of the Annals of Epidemiology. Your reaction to that study? There, there's no plausible theory to link Hep B vaccine to autism. There's, um, we hear about mercury, but um, that's been studied. We hear about other things. There's, there's no, no way that you can get from hepatitis B vaccine to autism. Why do you think, <clears throat> doctor, there is such a pushback from parents these days about vaccines? Where do you think it's coming from? If no research out there has scientifically linked it, and even Scott has said no scientific proof, more money and study needs to be done, correct? If there's no scientific proof, why do you think there's so much pushback from parents? <clears throat> you know, there, there's, there's nothing new about this. More than 100 years ago, we were having pushback about smallpox vaccine, and we had small riots started by people who didn't want to be vaccinated against smallpox. And if they had prevailed, we'd still be dealing with smallpox today. But because they didn't, we've gotten rid of smallpox, and now I'm concerned about the same phenomenon with measles and whooping cough and meningitis and the, and the other diseases that we can prevent with vaccination, that, that we can't eliminate them because of the, the stories, the rumors, the myths that surround vaccination, and I really wish that we could put those to rest. And Mr. Lester, I will ask you, if you admit that there is no scientific proof, scientific proof, only trends, but not scientific proof that these vaccines cause this, why would you not want other children to be vaccinated? Well, I'm not saying or I don't want to do all vaccinations. I, I think that's a decision for parents to make. It is, but it's something think, that you are pushing with your organization. We, you want other parents to make, in your mind, education, you know, educated yes. decisions. And so what I want parents to understand that, by and large, there's not scientific proof because vaccines haven't been studied for autism. The, out of the seven vaccines children get in the first year of life, six of those have not been studied for children who got the vaccines versus who did not receive the vaccines have not been studied for autism. The seventh one is hepatitis B. The most recent study showed a three times increased risk. And I, again, I will I have to say I differ. There are plausible hypotheses such as hepatitis B has been associated with uh, uh, affecting myelin growth, which is neurons in the brain, and that is associated with autism. So these are plausible hypotheses out there, again, with the Hib conjugate vaccine, which is in the first year of life, a recent study, uh, excuse me, a recent paper in the Medical Hypotheses Journal with a very interesting hypotheses on that, that it got, some, got support from a professor at Johns Hopkins that need to be studied further. And to say there's no scientific proof when it hasn't been studied, I think is, to say there's no scientific proof indicates, oh, it's not happening. There's no scientific proof because it hasn't been studied. Doctor, your response. You say it has been studied. There's, <clears throat> there's been a lot of research on uh, the association or non-association between vaccines and autism, between vaccines and and. Uh, well, what do you think causes or, autism? I don't know what causes autism. I wish I did. I wish we could do something about it. And I really understand that it's a devastating condition. And parents who have kids with autism seriously want to know why those children have autism and what can be done about it. 
but I th I'm afraid that, that, that hanging it on immunization does far more harm than good and doesn't help the kids with autism. Well, educate me here a little bit because it, is autism something that a child develops over time or is it something that they're born with or is there debate on that? They're probably born with it, but the, the signs of autism, if one watches very carefully, can be picked up, oh, in the first six months of life, but more often are picked up after the child turns one. And that's about the time that they've received a lot of immunizations. And so in many parents' minds, a link is made. My child had an immunization, and then I started seeing signs of autism, so one must have caused the other. But it, it is that, that coincidence of time that causes that misconception. I'll let you have the final word. The, uh, when a parent sees a child have run a high fever from vaccines immediately following, mm -hmm. and then that child regresses in autism, I don't think that that's... I think it's not fair to say that's a coincidence. I will say if, if some portion of autism cases are caused by vaccines, the risk profile at that point becomes uh, far towards vaccines having more risk than benefits, which in our view in Safe Minds means a clarion call for researchers to study what is really causing uh, autism from those vaccines and fix the vaccines so that we can be protected from diseases without having to suffer the vaccine injuries. All right, Mr. Laster and Dr. Blumenthal, thank you for both for your time this morning. Thank we you. appreciate thank it. You. Stay with us. We're coming right back after a commercial break.